speak with their fluent mouthwash. So I've been meaning to make this video since the channel came back two years ago. Unfortunately, it never happened because every time I tried to write it, the other guy would yell at me. Stop writing this video! Ow! I feared this video would become irrelevant in 2022. However, with remakes recently announced for The Last of Us, Resident Evil 4, and Pac-Man World, it seems those fears were unfounded. There's even a remake for The Simpsons Hit and Run coming as well, which is apparently going to be open world. Uh, actually, uh, Dexter, that's a fan uh, remake. It's just a fan thing. It's not going to be for the public. <laughs> what?! The onslaught of video game remakes appears to be never-ending, like the unstoppable Marching Maui. While it is terrific to see remakes of classic games from our childhood, there is no denying that they can sometimes cause more harm than good. A remake may expose dated game mechanics, which look primitive when analyzed with a contemporary lens. A developer's attempt to address these issues and modernize the game may also lead to backlash. In this video, we'll be looking at some video game remakes that have been released over the years and discuss the problems that have arisen in bringing them up to date on contemporary hardware. Oh, I know which ones you're talking about. Well, I hope you do, because you should have read the script in advance. And when I say contemporary hardware, I mean the contemporary hardware at the time of release. Before we get started, it is worth noting that there are two ways of bringing back an old game. By remastering it, or by remaking it. What's the difference? Well, a remaster is an enhanced version of an older game. This usually means that graphics have been improved, or numerous quality of life improvements have been made to address outdated game mechanics from the original release. Some examples of a remaster include The Last of Us Remastered, Skyward Sword HD, and the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. A remake, on the other hand, is a modern version of a classic game, rebuilt from the ground up. Oh, wait, 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 I just realized. If you flip around Skyward like, multiple times, it looks like Squidward. These games normally feature the same story and similar levels or gameplay mechanics. However, they also feature a multitude of new elements designed to make the game feel fresh, but familiar. It would be like rendering Wallace in CGI, but he still retained his love of cheese. But he's supposed to be doing porridge in the penguin house. Some examples include the Resident Evil remakes 1, 2, and 3, as well as the Final Fantasy VII remake, which has split the PS1 original into three separate installments. A, A trilogy. trilogy! It is worth noting that there is some crossover between remakes and remasters. When discussing remasters, it is often assumed that the developers worked with the game's original code to make the experience as authentic as possible. However, this isn't always true. What? Sometimes the developers have to build the remaster from scratch, which was the yeah! case. Ow! Which was the case for the Panzer Dragoon Spyro and Crash Bandicoot remasters. As a result, it is easier to ditch the distinctions and simply refer to both of them as remakes. So from this point on in the video, when we talk about remakes, we're talking about everything that's remade. When a developer is tasked with remaking an old video game, they have to carefully walk the tightrope between making something that is faithful to the original, whilst updating it to make it fit in with its modern era counterparts. When Vicarious Visions brought back the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy in 2017, 2017, my gosh. Their task was to simply remake the original game in glorious HD. Why, we now call it Glorious Spade. Yes, keeping the gameplay and level designs identical to the original releases. There were a few cosmetic changes, such as the inclusion of a fully playable Coco, and the way the bonus levels and box collecting worked in the first adventure. Besides that, the remake was as faithful as a priest on Sunday. Bless you. Thank you. Here I am blessing you. Ha ha ha! The problem with this was that Vincarious Visions weren't able to truly update the games so that they used the full power of the modern console hardware. Naughty Dog were working within the technical limitations of the PS1, which didn't just refer to graphics, but also dictated the type of obstacles Crash had to overcome, the amount of enemies on screen, or how big the bosses could be. 
Despite having considerably more horsepower, Vicarious Visions had to remain faithful to the original trilogy, meaning that they were working within the limitations of the PS1, but on a PS4. All they could do was make the game prettier. But my god, did they make the game pretty. In fact, the game looked so good, you had to look away in sheer awe. <laughs> It wasn't until the release of Crash Bandicoot 4 that we saw the true potential of a HD Crash Adventure running on modern hardware. A game completely free of the limitations of the original trilogy. Now there is nothing wrong with a remaster being designed to give a player a nostalgic kick, and for many, the Crash Insane trilogy was just what they needed to get them to fall in love with the character again. Although, what about the games that try to remain faithful to the original, while incorporating modern flourishes to make it compete against its contemporaries? Well, that has its downsides too. A great example of this would be Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, oh, yeah. released in 2004 for the Nintendo GameCube. This was a remake of the PS1 original, which saw the game get improved graphics, new cutscenes, and gameplay mechanics from Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, yeah. The most notable new mechanics included the first person aiming and the ability to hang from ledges. Ledges, yes. The problem was that the level design in the Twin Snakes remained largely unchanged from the original game. This meant it was much easier to sneak past guards, take out security cameras, and defeat the game's various bosses. In fact, you could argue the Ocelot boss battle is now broken, and you can just stand in the same spot and shoot him in first person mode. It made the game as easy as a jog in the park. The developers tried to compensate for this by making the enemies smarter than the original. This meant they communicated with each other via radio to make sure their comrades were still on patrol. Their bodies also didn't disappear when they were killed or subdued, meaning you had to hide them in lockers to avoid suspicion. Sadly, that wasn't enough. Stop that. Stop touching my potato chips on the side there, other guy. What? How'd you know I was touching potato chips? I see you in the corner of my no. eye. No! No! You have a sad eye! The level design in Metal Gear Solid 2 was far more dynamic and was designed with the new gameplay mechanics in mind. Think about the first boss fight with Olger, where you have to shoot the spotlights to stop yourself being blinded and get a better shot at shooting her. Metal Gear Solid for the PS1 was not designed with these mechanics in mind, and by not updating the level design, you're left with a game that feels unbalanced. A bit like me when I'm walking on a tightrope. So what about a video game remake where the developers have taken the original game's world and story and have completely revamped the gameplay mechanics or modified the level design to make an entirely new but familiar experience? A great example of this would be the Resident Evil 2 remake, which was released in 2019. It took the original Resident Evil 2 storyline and many of the same locations, but offered it from a new perspective. Oh, I'm telling you about it, I love Resident Evil 2. It has a lot of my favorite characters. While the original game used the fixed camera angles and tank controls that made the game so scary, the remake used the over-the-shoulder view that was made popular with Resident Evil 4. Oh, I love that game! That's the one that has the Jill sandwich, right? Do you mean the main character Jill from number three? Jill Is Valentine? That Jill? No, I thought the yeah, name was Jill. Yeah, it's no. Claire Redfield in the second one. That's my favorite character! Yeah! <laughs> Well, clearly not, otherwise you would have remembered her name. The result is an experience that gave fans a chance to replay Resident Evil 2's story from an entirely new perspective. Unlike the Twin Snakes, this remake modified the level design and changed the way the enemies behave to enhance the new gameplay perspective. The end product went down very well amongst critics and fans, receiving critical acclaim across the board and selling over 9 million copies. Unfortunately, even with this approach to the remake, the game still falls under an issue that actually plagues every video game remake ever made. Comparison. Since the game follows similar story beats to the original, it is hard for players who have played both versions to not instantly compare them. They'll draw up lists of what is better in the remake, and what is better in the original, becoming engrossed in every little detail that they'll slowly lose their mind like Jack Skellington trying to understand Christmas. There are so many things I cannot grasp. When I think I've got it, then at last. Through my bony fingers it does slip. Like a snowflake in a fiery grip. 
Maybe the jump scares are better in the original. Or well, the music is better. But the graphics are better in the remake. And the enemies are smarter. Oh, which one's better? Why can't I just enjoy the game for what it is? Not only do gamers begin to compare, but also all the surprises are gone. As you'll know what is coming. But what if that surprise doesn't come? Maybe you will be disappointed because your favorite bit didn't appear, you know? It's just like, oh, I'll just be furious at Capcom. Just cut it out! The three examples provided show different ways a developer approaches a video game remake, with each method having their own strengths and weaknesses. So the question is, what is the ideal way to remake a video game? I'm sure you're gonna tell us. I suppose one way would be to simply up-res the visuals to a higher definition and add minor quality of life improvements that don't drastically change the way the original game plays or looks. Introducing Skyward Sword Spade. Spade. Yes, you said it right. Yes, give me, give me some mm, benefit me, of the doubt. I'm gonna give you a hug for that. Give me. Okay, okay, but it's a bit sweaty. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you're all sticky. Skyward Sword Spade is a high definition remaster of the original game that came out for the Nintendo Wii back in 2011. I actually got the game for free by dressing up as Link. The graphics were identical, except they were upscaled to run a 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second. The motion controls were retained thanks to the Nintendo Switch Joy Cons, although the game also provides button-only controls for those who found the mouse controls to be the spawn of the devil. <laughs> the game also incorporated many small improvements that helped the game tremendously, including Phi being a less intrusive companion. Intrusive. <laughs> intrusive. <laughs> Skippable cutscenes and text boxes that could be fast forward or didn't repeat every time you started another gameplay session. You know what I mean. For those who played it, you know what I mean. The result is a game that feels like the definitive version of the original, retaining the spirit of the Wii version while ironing out most of the annoyances that plagued it. It doesn't dramatically alter the experience, minimizing comparisons to the original, and the graphics aren't substantially reworked so that you'll confuse it for a contemporary Switch game. This is Skyward Sword in HD, and arguably the way video game remakes should be approached if you want to minimize the problems that such projects conjure up. Conjure up. Conjure up. <coughs> Whoa! The only big criticism I have with this game is that the UK retail price is £40! It should be 30 at least. But then Nintendo always wants you to pay full whack for their products. Look, I already paid for this £65 toothbrush, can you leave me alone? Ultimately, this is only my opinion and Ars Review's opinion, and why it sounds like I am being mean to the games I've discussed, the truth is I actually love them all. We had a blast playing the Crash Insane Trilogy, the Twin Snakes was my proper introduction into Metal Gear, and the Resident Evil 2 remake, well, actually, to be honest, I haven't played it, but I, I have. know. It's oh, but, amazing. But the other guys it played it. favorite characters. Despite this, we do acknowledge the issues that come with remaking video games, which ultimately leads to another question. Why do we play video game remakes? Because we're wrangling for the the f the f***ing soldier! Everyone has their own reasons, and for me, it's just about having an excuse to replay some of my favorite games from my childhood. Yeah, I mean, I remember when they announced Pac-Man World Repack, you were crying like Matthew McConaughey from Interstellar. I play from the beginning. <laughs> A remake of Pac-Man World is coming soon. Pac-Man's family has been kidnapped. To rescue them, he sets off for Ghost Island. Eating dots isn't all you can do here. Trounce enemies with pack dots the rev roll, the butt bounce, and a giant Pac-Man? From high-speed chases to galactic escapades, you'll explore all sorts of zany levels. Save the Pac-Fan in Pac-Man World Repack, launching on Nintendo Switch August 26th. Sometimes all you want is that burst of nostalgia and reminisce about the good old days. Is that a good thing? Well, that's debatable. Because for some people, there's rumors they say that if you love nostalgia, it apparently means you don't love where you are and you don't love the modern day. That's probably why I'm less nostalgic than you, because I love my life. For other gamers, it may be a chance to play these video games for the first time, having not been born when they were released, or they simply missed out because they were busy playing football or something. 
Whatever the reason, it seems video game remakes are going to keep coming. So if you're not already on the bandwagon, you better get on board. Yes, because just like your bowel movements, they're gonna keep on coming. Thanks for watching. I, I love remakes because uh, I get to re-experience